hopefuls. We are on air with MBA Waves, your weekly vidcast talking all things business and education, streaming live every Tuesday on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. We bring you lots of tips uh, to help you into a top rank MBA program and get you up close and personal with many of these business schools. Uh, today, uh, a big welcome to Ecole Polytechnic, one of the world famous and in fact known as France's best engineering school. So we're going to go around the room and introduce who's joining us today. So we start with Alexander. Go on. Uh, Alexander, go ahead and introduce yourself here. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, so I'm Alexander Protic and I'm uh, uh, head of talent recruitment and admissions in B2B of the Executive Master Program. And I've been uh, around uh, <laughs> since uh, five years and a half at Ecole Polytechnique. Um, and I like to recruit people around the world. Uh, some people like Benjamin here. <laughs> Welcome, Alexander. So, and then Benjamin Carlotti, who is an alumnus of the Executive Master. Yes, hi everyone. Uh, yeah, so as Alex just mentioned, uh, and you as well, I have been, uh, I went to Ecole Polytechnique in uh, 2020 for about a year and a half. Uh, so I'm from the fourth promotion. Uh, and most of my, let's say, professional background, I, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't like to say, I don't like the term serial entrepreneur, but that's a bit what I am. Um, and, uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why I joined the program as well was to, uh, to have a, a very, very strong focus on the, on innovation and, uh, and, uh, and engineering, which I, I hadn't had as a background. So welcome Benjamin. And of course, my dear co-hosts, Eric and Bara, how have you been? Great, Kritika, great to see you guys. Great to see you both. Hi, hi, hi. Awesome. So I'm going to let Eric kick off, um, you know, with his first question. Over to you, Eric. Sure. So um, um, let's let's get into um, let's get into why you're here today on MBA Waves. You know, most of the programs that we talk to are top ranked, more kind of classic MBA programs. And as I understand, in 2017, Ecole Polytechnique launched the Executive Master, which seems a bit like an executive MBA with a tech twist to it, if it's if it's okay to say. So can we start off the episode today by you guys explaining some key points about the program? Yeah, sure. Uh, so thank you once again for having us, all of you. And um, I'm really um, enthusiastic about the program I worked for because it's a very unique program internationally. Um, I would say maybe a bit more than a tech twist because there is a one pillar completely dedicated to technology, one pillar to innovation, and one pillar uh, which will uh, really correspond to what MBA uh, around the world are, uh, programs are doing. So um, that technology and innovation part is something that we uh, can really uh, not easily find around the world. There are some programs that will allow you to have some tech uh, uh, education, but this one is a really deep dive in technology. You have one option that you will explore throughout the year. You have one team project, which is related to technology innovation. And then you have your uh, theoretical knowledge from one part. And then on the other, you have uh, a very concrete application of that knowledge that you learn about. And then you have all the managerial leadership and coaching part as well. So maybe we'd like to add something. Yeah, no, just to to, uh, to bounce back on that. Um, I actually uh, went through a undergraduate business school in the US um, and I was not looking to join another, let's say, you know, business, traditional business program. Um, so I remember when I applied to Ecole Polytechnique, it was Ecole Polytechnique or nothing because I, I loved really this tech uh, aspect and focus that they had on. Uh, and of course, for the strength of their you know, reputation and network uh, all over the world. So uh, yeah, for me, it was really the deciding point for, for applying to the program. That's great. And everything is taught in English, right? Everything is, or is it in French or how, how do you guys- Not, not really. Get your classes. <laughs> okay, so, so that's a twist because the, uh, the Ecole Polytechnique is a very traditional French institution founded uh, by Napoleon. Uh, let's say, and uh, the idea was to um, have some of the French values as well. That's why we had a bilingual program until 2023. In March, we launched uh, an English, uh, only English program as well. But the first one, which existed for six years, was only uh, bilingual, French and English. So 
all the participants were required to speak both languages. Got it. Got it. And where do the students come from? Are they from all over France? Are they international? You know, <laughs> uh, I would say, uh, it, I mean, even based on my on my own promotion, um, we were a bit from all over the place. Um, yes, they, they were, uh, let's say, uh, you know, probably about half of people who were, um, you know, from France, but uh, but the other half was from all over the place. So it's and I would say I've been in touch with the latest uh, promotions five and six, uh, and it's even more and more international. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. so it's, it's quite impressive the, the reach that the school can have. Yeah, we don't have uh, we don't have an online program. Uh, the founders' uh, decision choice was to have everything uh, in presence which is one of the strengths of the program. Uh, however, that made some people travel from New York, from Singapore, from Africa, uh, every every month to Polytechnic because it's a four to five days uh, per month uh, program in presence. Uh, so nine modules are in France, and then we have uh, partner institutions in uh, UC Berkeley, in SMU Singapore, and the uh, Technical University in, in Munich. I'm just going to say before I didn't realize that my mute button was on, um, quick translation, promotion in French means graduating class or batch. We say promotion in French, so if you're wondering. Very what true. Yeah. <laughs> um, what we call in French a faux ami or false friend. It sounds the same in English, but it's actually not. Um, I wanted to ask you guys, what is the typical profile for um, candidates? Ecole, Ecole Polytechnique is looking for, for candidates to join the program, including like you know age level, a level of experience or a professional background? Yeah, so the program is pretty senior in terms of uh, admissions and in terms of uh, um, the, what we want to be a harmony between people who are, who are senior managers. So they have, uh, these years we have uh, in, in, a, in average 46 year uh, of age, 46, they have a lot of uh, professional and managerial experience. Um, so we do not accept a junior profile, sometimes upper intermediate, but it, it really is a senior program. So yeah. let's say that 30% uh, of the people are the CEOs of the companies, 60% uh, of them are in, the, in executive boards, and then we have a variety of profiles which are uh, sometimes from different institutions, they are startup person. Maybe eventually you can give us a few words about your uh, your class yes yeah, sure I, I even remember when, when we had a, a chat with uh, with alex when i was applying to the program i i was afraid that i was a bit too young so i mentioned to him that I'm, i was 35 uh year old when i when i applied and he reassured me no no actually you would you would not be the the youngest there's someone younger than you who's already uh, who's already in uh so that gave me a bit of confidence but i remember that the the average age was around 43 um about at least 15 years of working experience and I mean, I was really not surprised, but really happy to see that uh, our graduating class uh, was extremely diverse. We had about probably one third of engineers. Uh, we got a couple of doctors, people from the army, uh, a few, you know, uh, startup people like me. Uh, it was very, very diverse. So it was it made the class uh, and the questions asked by the class um, uh, extremely interesting. And I think even interesting for the teachers as well, you know, to have. Uh, to be challenged from uh, from different uh, from different backgrounds, so that made very uh, uh, very valuable. Yeah, I think like I'm very uh, you know excited about this because these days we get a lot of people uh, on the higher end of the spectrum, typically looking for going to a regular full time MBA program, which will take in only people at an average of around say six years of experience. So I'm thrilled to hear about your program. I was curious about. Uh, why might certain professionals look at this program uh, in terms of uh, the career outcomes that they would expect? So, yeah, uh, today around the world, you have uh, about 15,000 institutions proposing an MBA program. And uh, the competition is huge. Many of them, if you uh, take a benchmarking for around uh, seven to 10 years, transformed into some kind of digital options, etc. because technology and innovation are uh, so much influencing our uh, daily businesses. So maybe if you don't want to become a priest or a sports teacher, I mean, everything other will be completely influenced by technology and innovation. Um, therefore, um, the Polytechnic used this knowledge uh, 
several people who, who were able to create a program such as this, which is extremely complicated to create because you have a, uh, a mindset and a way the business school functions. And then you have every, and the business mindset is very fast, taking risk, everything, and the uh, research world is everything which is opposite. You want to test um, thousands of times to explore everything, uh, take your time, uh, take everything uh, through any analysis. So it's it's two different worlds which really matched in our case, and we created this this program. We're very proud of it, and um, uh, of course this deep dive in technology innovation, and uh, um, you have one possibility to to be specialized in technology or innovation you want to explore, and then you also uh, have the opportunity to see the overview of technology innovation which are influencing the world of tomorrow because of course when you go to laboratory and research centers you always have this uh, extraordinary advantage seeing what will be on the market for uh, in five to six years so that's that's huge to know in advance where we're going to be in terms of uh, iot artificial intelligence uh, 4.0 influencing our business that's helpful. And what about um, like Benjamin? Maybe you wanted to share some examples of, of alumni stories for our audience to learn about. Sure, um, and that's actually what I was telling uh, uh, Alex recently that I was I'm still in touch. I mean, the, the size of the class uh, was 36, or still is, I think 36. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm still, which I really loved because it's not that big, uh, and you can really interact with with everyone. Um, and having graduated about 18 months ago, I would say I'm in, in touch regularly about with half of my class, which is, you know, I think it's really cool. And what I realized is that half, as almost everyone has changed one way or another their career path since they've, you know, been accepted and been through the program, which is, and me included, uh, which is quite cool to hear. And as Alex mentioned, we've had you know many of high senior executives in the program who had been working in big corporations for many years, for over a decade sometimes, and they switch path and they've joined startups, they've joined scale ups, you know, and their um, their uh, their you know uh, uh, the the project that they had, the team project that they had followed during the program, they actually it actually became a company uh, and they've started it. Uh, so it's it's quite amazing to see, and uh, and it's uh, yeah, it's I think it's the best uh, the best way to explain how how this this program can be uh, can really transform your your professional life, really. Even even some of the people who didn't want to uh, transform, let's say uh, thirty percent of thirty percent of CEOs who are uh, enrolled in the program, they usually want to transform their company, earn uh, much more money, etc. But they don't really want to to change uh, their career pathway they don't want to, to go to another job because it's very very precise what they want to to do here uh, but some of them just like recently we had a ceo of a huge tech company very well known around the world he's a ceo for europe um he wanted to stay in the company and really to to bring the transformation in terms of iot uh, precisely uh, but he met someone who uh, gave a magnificent proposal to uh, to uh, direct the um, digital transformation of uh, the state of Luxembourg. So he accepted it and then he changed his career. So, I mean, there is so many um, transformational stories and it's really interesting. We had uh, one team project, which which is uh, the part where you put your um, uh, theoretical knowledge in practice. One of uh, the participants was uh, Laurent, a French guy, he created a company in, um, in cybersecurity. So it was a startup for a few years. He didn't really advance as much as he wanted. And he joined our, our program to accelerate. So during the program, he was joined by several people who were in, uh, working in different fields, not, not at all cybersecurity, but they um, got him a lot of uh, introspection and uh, great feedback about some things to improve, improve. So the project, of course, with all the people teaching in our program we, we have an amazing uh, academia we have a uh, Nobel laureates for teaching as well so it's really a great uh, group of people to be with and to learn from and at the, at the end of the program the, the his startup was extremely accelerated and um, three years after they became now the world leader in their field so it's really amazing 
I think like we live for these stories of transformation and that's what, you know, any MBA is about. That's awesome. And I love that you guys do that with such a small program. I, I, I've gotten to know a lot of these, like we would call boutique model, boutique programs where it's really intimate. Like everyone in the class knows each other super well. It's like a like, family. And yet, even though it's this very small cohort, you also are part of a larger group where you're, you know, however many thousand of alumni that it's a larger network that you're part of. So it's like this, this first circle and then the larger circle of let's say previous batches of this program since 2017. And then the next circle is like the full um, alumni network. And that's fantastic to be able to leverage that kind of network. But um, let's talk a little bit about the admissions process of Polytechnique. Many of our listeners today are thinking about applying to the program. So what should they expect? Like what are some suggestions you'd like to offer in terms of being a great applicant for the executive master? Okay, of course. So, so maybe I can kick off with the, with the institutional part, and maybe Benjamin can tell your experience of the admission process. Uh, so, the first uh, part we we have three phases. The first one is uh, given to the uh, talent recruitment and admissions team to decide or the first selection. So, um, there are many candidates uh, from three thousand five hundred to four thousand people interested in the program every year. So. Uh, uh, our team is communicating with email, telephone, and then it, it, it's going down to 550 interviews per year that we'll talk with our team. And then um, the first part is the orientation, of course, and then uh, the recommendation we provide. Either we encourage candidates to candidate or not. We can uh, also uh, orient them to another program, uh, more classical MBA or, or another tech program if they need it. Um, so we usually encourage around uh, 100 people to candidate, and then we create uh, uh, a Salesforce solution. We are very lucky to also to train uh, the um, uh, executives from Salesforce. So we got this uh, interactive solution, which is which became our kind of a CRM, and uh, they will um, all they will have the opportunity to answer several questions of the jury. Uh, of course, with the, with the normal part of any uh, application file where they will provide their information. And they answering these questions, they will talk about their motivation, their project, interest for uh, technology, um, some um, uh, general knowledge as well. And uh, this is where a jury will get to decide with the re uh, referee's uh, letters as, as well. Uh, the, uh, the jury will decide whether they would like to invite them or not to the third phase, which is... Uh, one-to-one uh, -one, uh, with the jury, uh, and then the, um, the final decision will be made. So how was that for you? Stressful. <laughs> <laughs> Very stressful, uh, because I, I remember, I mean, my, my story is a bit, because I was applying during COVID, uh, so I was, I was in lockdown, um, and I remember that I had just uh, sold my company a few months before, and I was like, okay, what do I do with my life? Uh, and I think as many people during, you know, lockdown, we kind of did that. Uh, and I thought, you know what, I think I feel the need to go back to school. Uh, I want to learn again. And, uh, and that's when I was going through, I wanted to stay in France. So I wanted to, I did a few of the, uh, the, the best schools in, uh, in France. And as soon as I've clicked, uh, uh on, the, on the exec executive master at Polytechnique, I knew that I wanted to try, uh, I didn't know that I wanted to get in, but I wanted to try to get in and, uh, and I was in touch with Alex. Um, and he gave me great advice on the first like half an hour uh, conversation that we had. I actually thought that I didn't have the time to apply because during COVID, I think the deadline was April 30th. And then Alex told me, no, no, you get an extra month because of COVID. So, you know, uh, take your chance. So, so I did. And for the past probably five to six weeks, um, I've really worked a lot on the application um, and, you know, trying to, to, and I, I, I thought the process was interesting because it made, me, it made you really think about the motivation that you have for joining the program. Um, and uh, and you, it, made, it makes you really think about, okay, why do I want to get out of it? Um, and, uh, and I thought about, okay, where would I be in the next five years? Okay, this, and how this program could help me. Uh, and of course, how could I help the program as well to bring more diversity based on my background, my experience as an entrepreneur and so on. Um, but yes, I remember vividly the, um, the jury face-to-face, uh, -face, which for me was online. 
and uh, and yeah, it was a, a not a traumatic experience. The water is a bit is a bit tough, but it was intense. Let's say. And I remember when I hang up, I call my sister and I said, oh, "Yeah, I'm not getting in." Uh, they were they kind of played the good cup bad cup on me, and uh, and actually, you know, just probably like three or four days after, I, I got a call from from Alex giving me the good news and. I really couldn't believe it, and uh, and I was so 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 happy. So um, yeah, it's not not an easy track, but as you would expect, right, uh, to join such a, such a good school. So um, so yeah, uh, uh, interesting path, really. <laughs> I love the candor here. <laughs> yeah. That's why I can express just one 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 little thing that uh, you know the juries are composed from a, a variety of professors, but they change all the time. Sometimes they are going to be uh, more kind, good, more good cut, and then some days going to be more bad cut. So it depends on jury, but it's usually it's uh, it's a process where we, we really want to to understand um, everything better. So yeah, many questions may be asked, but uh, it's always really very uh, very good intention. Yeah, there's no true questions. There's no because I was afraid of that because as a to bounce back on that, I, I don't come. From, I mean, I'm not an engineer. I know, uh, uh, and uh, and I was a bit afraid of okay, could I keep up with the expectations of, of Polytechnique, which, uh, as you mentioned earlier, is is one of the best you know engineering school in the world. Um, so there's no trick question. They're not gonna ask you, you know, uh, to to calculate very quickly uh, some very uh, uh, very difficult uh, math question. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's all good intention, but it could be a bit stressful. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you need to change the name. Don't call it Dury. <laughs> True. It's, it's interesting to think if you were to redo that today after going through the program, how you'd feel afterwards. Like what kind of confidence and what kind of answers and who are you now um, with comparable questions? You know, it's, it's always really interesting to be, be able to, you know, read books again, go through, you know, similar, similar things again. Um, do you have specific suggestions for folks who are applying that like are there are there ways that they could prepare for the jury or to prepare for these different pieces and feel more confident going in yeah i mean i i remember that i well i was always a bit i was a bit of, always of a fan of the school itself uh, so i wanted to uh, and even the fact that i was applying to it i was like you know what um, out of not even just because i expected some questions which i didn't have about the school itself but I did a, a, a lot of research on, you know, uh, uh, the program, how it was started. I read a lot about the alumni stories. Uh, I kind of tried to come up with a list of 15, 20 different questions. I think at the end of the jury, I think it was Nicholas. It was like, okay, it's enough questions now. Almost like laughing, but <laughs> but I think he it was, it was also happy that I came prepared. Um, and I would say take the time it needs because it, it will be it will be time consuming um, to fulfill the whole application as uh, as I mentioned before it took me probably five to six weeks to really really come up with something because I wanted to come with something good right uh, and I want my essays to be perfect uh, I, was, I know I had to think about who I wanted the uh, recommendations letters to come from um, so and the the questions that you will be asked um, during the admission process again they're not tricky uh, but they will make you think about, okay, am I ready to dive in to this program? Um, is this the right program for me? So it will, it's like almost a mirror, you know, it was very interesting in that sense. Um, so, um, so, and what, one thing I did, which maybe not everyone could, uh, would, would be able to do, but, um, I actually went on the, on the campus itself, um, a, a few days before the, the, the jury, uh, the, the, the jury questions and, um, it was very interesting for me to just walk around, you know, kind of have a feel for the uh, for the campus because I had gone to the U.S. and I have never been to a French school, um, and uh, and I talked to a few students, uh, talked to a few people there, and it was it was interesting to just get a feel for it. And actually, I mentioned that uh, to the jury, and I think they appreciated it as well. You know, they could feel that I could already see myself there, so that was a, a bit of a bonus. But um, yeah, did I catch that you said that Napoleon had started? This, is that correct? Yes, so, actually, so Napoleon uh, reformed the school. So uh, most of the time we say Napoleon started the school. It was uh, initiated just before, but he is, let's say, one of the founders of what it is today. Mm -hmm. Amazing. 
And just to mention, I am, I'm from Corsica myself, uh, which of course my home <laughs> is from. So you can imagine the, pr the the pride that I had when I got admitted. <laughs> Did they have a parade when you when you finished? Did they? <laughs> of course. <laughs> so I'm, you know, I come from the test prep world. I'm, you know, we work with students on the GMAT and the EA and and the GRE. So it's a big topic these days, right? Especially in the United States, admissions testing. So. What is the take on the GMAT or an admissions test and how important is it for your institution? Okay, so we, we, we don't use them because we have our uh, file, uh, Benjamin said it's like a mirror question. So there are questions that want to understand uh, your motivation uh, as we have this three phase process, we get to uh, meet uh, the people pretty uh, powerfully. So we. In the first phase, we kind of know where we stand. Then the jury have their own opinion as well. And then we have these um, writings, which allow us to uh, to see uh, the choice you make with your words of how do you direct um, your achievements, your uh, defaults, etc. So it, it gives us a picture which is pretty clear. And we don't tend to use a genet or another test. Um, not because they are bad, it's simply um, they are not maybe the most adequate for our uh, program that we really um, spend a lot of, of time on. We also, I mean, before the people apply, they usually come to our events to organize uh, ourselves. And we also, or, uh, I met Eric through different uh, events that we went to uh, as uh, representing the different uh, schools. But uh, yeah, we have this exposure which is uh, larger, but we also have our events. So we, most of the time, know candidates pretty well. Napoleon doesn't need your little GMAT. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even come up with like a comeback for that at all. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> All right. So I have seen that I'm an engineer and I have been always fascinated by, you know, the top engineering programs across the world. And, uh, you know, we know that Polytechnique is uh, quite engineering or tech based and being successful in business. And as you yourself mentioned, you know, um, it means more uh, and being fluid and adaptable and having more hard skills. So how does the school uh, bring these two things together? Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, so uh, Polytechnique is quite an old institution. We have a program uh, which started in 2017. So Polytechnic is much bigger than us and it was a great accelerator for the program. But if you if you wish, well, Polytechnic is a pretty unique institution in the world because there is uh, this uh, uh, tech uh, innovation science part and there is uh, this humanities extraordinary part with languages, with uh, this general culture. And then um, th there is sport and discipline which are extremely important in the institution. So, um, you know, for instance, students, uh, other than executive students, they have a, a compulsory uh, six hours of sport per week. Wow. And most of them have eight. Uh, so uh, you will see them running around uh, <laughs> yeah, dressed for the sports uh, all, the, all the time, etc. And they're pretty uh, competitive and good in sports. So this, there is this balance between... Uh, mind and body, which is extremely important for the think This is a culture of the institution. Um, and uh, this is something that Napoleon initiated at the time with some of the other people that uh, were thinking about the balance uh, between, uh, I mean, it's an old uh, Latin proverb that uh, speaks about Mensana and Corpore Sano. And uh, this is really what we can see at Polytechnic campus all the, all the time. There is this balance and it's really extraordinary to see in this uh, discipline part. You know, I, I work a lot with the Sorbonne University, uh, Sciences Po, different institutions. And um, uh, the discipline at Polytechnic is pretty amazing because you see how the, uh, how effortless it is to organize uh, uh, very complex things very easily because people have this focus, discipline. They have, uh, in the first year of Polytechnic, you have uh, McKinsey coaches co coaching them on, on very important things that they will need in fourth year. So it's really... Uh, I would say a very advanced institution. And then how how that results? 
uh, well, you will see today that mo most of the French leaders um, in technology innovation, but in business as well, uh, came from Polytechnic and uh, in the 40 major French companies, uh, most of them are Polytechnic alums and in internationally, which is not as known as well in France, um, uh, Polytechnic is the fourth institution uh, in the world providing uh, international leaders in business. So it's, it's pretty, um, yeah, pretty obvious about the business part. It's impressive. Amazing. So what kinds of classes does the program offer? You're talking about government officials having these, this degree. Is it similar to a classic MBA program or are there unique classes that are offered? Okay, so so every participants can uh, can tailor uh, their year. So there is uh, three tracks that everyone will uh, explore. The first one is your choice of technology innovation that you will work on. Uh, then you will deepen this knowledge uh, with the professors, experts, researchers that will help you um, have a finer vision of, of this field. And then at the end of the year, you will. Um, you will submit a written report about uh, your research of that field or, or this, of technology or innovation applied to business. Then you will have this team project where concre concretely we're working on projects that, ha that have to uh, end with the presentation you made. It's like a Shark Tank in the US or a Kivet Mon Associé in France. And uh, you, will, you will be facing business angels, investors, uh, uh, celebrities, professors who are judging your project. So it, it's very concrete. And then the third part is a common ground of, of different uh, topics. You will also explore technology innovation topics, uh, as well as uh, the finance, the business plan, uh, uh, typical uh, coaching uh, classes, etc. We call also military coaching, which is a little bit uh, different than, uh, than classical coaching. But it, it really is something that you, you, will, you will tailor to your needs in two thirds of the program, and one is common for everyone. And Benjamin, how did you find the classes as a student? I, well, I mean, I, I still, I've kept all my class notes and I still look at them, you know, uh, from time to time, believe it or not. Um, and uh, I'm still really uh, amazed of, of the, um, um, like the, the, the variety of, uh, of classes that we've received. I mean, I can give you, uh, I can almost, you know, uh, Give you by heart some of the some of the uh, the stories and the examples and the experiences that we've had from uh, the Nobel Prize, you know, who taught us a class for two hours. We had an amazing class on space exploration uh, for for a few hours as well in Toulouse. Uh, I mean, we've had uh, really relevant classes on AI, you know, for during one week, which now really pay off, you know. And I still look at my class notes when because AI has become such a huge topic lately. Um, so, and as as Alex mentioned, we've also had some. I remember a very, very powerful uh, uh, class on uh, on negotiation. So talk about soft skills uh, from a professor who also used to taught at Harvard. Who still is teaching at still. still is teaching at Harvard exactly. Um, so it's extremely diverse. Um, there's of course the more uh, classic, you know, finance uh, class, which helped a lot for the team project. I've really, really enjoyed the team project, uh, which for me was working on uh, on uh, actually ongoing business who was trying to. Uh, to launch a, uh, a new business unit. Uh, and, uh, and as Alex mentioned, we had to present it at the end of the year. We were graded on it and we've had to face, you know, members of juries, you know, investors. Uh, and it was, a, uh, it was a real, it was not just a, um, you know, a, 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 like nothing in theory. It was actually very practical. Uh, and that's what made it very interesting. So we, and also hearing about the other team projects worked on by, by my classmates. Uh, because, you know, you hear about uh, 10 different ones and uh, about topics that I never thought I could understand at the beginning of the, uh, of the program, you know. I mean, I made my, my uh, let's say, call it thesis or state-of-the-art report on, you know, a topic that I almost knew nothing about when I started. But I worked a lot, I can tell you, I studied a lot. Uh, and I came up with, you know, a state-of-the-art project on, on hydrogen uh, and on how to store it, potentially, which is also a very relevant uh, topic today. Uh, so, so yeah, just uh, very exciting memories still, as you can tell. <laughs> and Ben, um, sticking with you, what about the alumni network? What kind of services have you seen as an alum provided by the school? Listen, I can give you one very concrete example. Um, yeah. 
the the job that I have right now comes from uh, an alumni, uh, and actually someone that I've that did the program two years before me, and we met through you know a, a lunch. And we started speaking together and we hit it off. And then a couple of months after I was working for the guy. Uh, so I think that speaks for itself, of course. Uh, one of the things that that's, uh, we're doing now, and I was literally a couple of months ago, we, uh, you know, there was a, an event organized between all the different graduation classes. Uh, so I, I got to meet you know, uh, people from, uh, from the first class, from the second one, uh, the latest one, which is the promotion six, I believe. Uh, seven now, um, and of course you're part of the alumni uh, of the entire you know school, which is you know meaning the engineering uh, students uh, um, you know who did uh, the the classic very tough to get in program as well. Um, so which is really amazing. Right? I receive emails from events being organized almost on a on a monthly basis, uh, and it's quite fascinating how how strong it is, and, it, and it's it's really an understatement. Um, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to join Polytechnic, um, because that's the idea of, of it that I had. But I could tell, you know, uh, being part of it now for the past uh, 18 months, uh, it's really paid off. It's really paid off. That's awesome. That's what makes it worth it, right? Being a part of that lifetime network. Exactly. Now, I, I heard you say, um, Alexander, that there was, or maybe Benjamin, you said that there's 36 people in the class. Is it 36? people each each cohort um, or has that changed since 2017 when the program launched no actually the, when the program launched uh, there were only uh, 20 people uh, 20 spots offered because we wanted to start uh, small and at the beginning you know it was always testing the business model so for us it was the same thing and uh, then uh, we had 30 the following year and then we uh, uh, had this number of 36 that we now keep. Do you have any plans of like increasing the size of it, given the no. you know, amazing work that you guys do? No, because the 36 uh, corresponds to nine team projects of four people. And we absolutely want to have a small courts to work with uh, people individually, spend a lot of time with each one of them. And with uh, with a larger group that, that begins to be uh, difficult, I wouldn't say impossible, but we we have uh, a number of uh, tutors per project. We have uh, an, an academic uh, program which, which showed to work very well. So we don't want to change it for the time being, at least. Got it. So you had mentioned about like it being uh, in a nine months of like four to five days of immersion on campus, and then like of, of course with partner universities. Can you speak a little bit more about uh, what exactly is the life of a student? How does it look like? <laughs> yes, of course, of course. Uh, and I, I can say that I was, um, maybe for me it was uh, even more special because I had made the decision not to work full time during the program because mm -hmm. I really wanted to spend time on it. Uh, and sometimes uh, I was really when I started diving into the program and given the amount of work that you have to do and studying that you have to do, uh, I was very happy that I had made that decision. Uh, and I was, um, you know, uh, uh, really admiring people who were working full time while having uh, to follow the program because it basically um, you have, so as, as Alex mentioned, one week per month uh, where you meet up on, on campus uh, with classes from, you know, nine until until six. Uh, so it's quite long days, uh, very fascinating days. Uh, and you always have, uh, well, homework sounds a bit high schooly, but yeah, uh, you, have, you have work to do in between those, uh, those sessions. Uh, and sometimes a lot of work, not just uh, um, of you know, following those, those courses, but also before to prepare yourself. Because, um, of course, you're only maybe spending six or ten hours on the topic, and you're not going to become a specialist of it in six or 10 hours, but you're going to start at a very high level. So you have to make sure that before you're getting a class on, you know, AI, that you're just don't come as, you know, completely ignoring what AI is. Uh, so preparation time was very important for me to try to get up to the level that the, the teachers or the experts uh, were going to, uh, to give us that day. Um, so, and of course you have the team project which is really time consuming as well. Um, and that's really what you make out of it and what your team will make out of it. On, I remember that we were meeting 
um, together, all four of us, um, on a monthly basis, whether you know in person or online, to work on the team project that we that we have chose to work on. Um, and and yeah, it takes time, and and uh, and the uh, the person in charge of you know supervising this team project um, is quite tough. Uh, so it will challenge you, uh, and uh, and therefore, when you know you have to present the the advancements of your um, of the team project, um, yeah, you better be ready. So 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 it it means that you'll be you'll be challenged in every way, uh, and you'll receive very tough feedback uh, if you're not up to the task. So so I would say that those those are uh, yeah the typical uh, focus on the on my life as a student there. It's a very love but it, it, it makes uh, the job done it really exactly. makes projects uh, projects uh, advance uh, extraordinary okay. yeah and i think that's the only way to learn how to be in the real world and to make things work 100%, yeah yeah it's very practical um so i guess just because we're kind of nearing the end of the episode so just to kind of wrap things up I guess I would first ask Alex and then to Ben, what, what are some advice that you would give to anyone that's considering the program? So my, my advice would be to, uh, to come to Polytechnic, to meet us and uh, talk about the project and uh, uh, the aspirations so that we could have uh, both sides a better idea of, of, of the potential application. And everything will will continue from there. But I think this first contact is extremely important because really, once again, we orient people as well. We, we do orient a lot of them to other institutions, but we, um, how to say, we, we do not consume the, the time of people. We really are very direct. Everything goes very fast in this first stage. So uh, it can be both inspirational and useful for the candidate. Nice. And if people want, if people can't come to France to visit on campus, can they do like a virtual tour, or maybe you want to pop? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. We, we have so many tools. We are Alex, you want to pop an email address or a website into the chat? I can share it on the screen. Thank you so much. Yeah, so so definitely that, that's possible for all the people who are not in France. Even though we do travel around the world as well, and there, there is a lot of possibility to meet us. But of course, um, all means are possible. Yeah. Yeah, and, and to bounce back on that, I would definitely recommend to, uh, I mean, it sounds simple, but for me, I spent, I remember, a few hours on the website of the program, going through, reading the testimonies, uh, reading the program, you can download it, um, really, you know, uh, uh, try to get a, a good understanding of the topics that will be covered uh, in the program. Um, if you consider applying, be ready to study and work hard, uh, and, but in the, uh, in a good way, you know, I've, I mean, you were there, if you go back to school when you're in your, in your forties, it's tough. It's not easy because you know, your, your mind is, I mean, usually you haven't gone back to study, you haven't studied for the past 15 years. So it's, it's, it's a difficult switch. Um, but, and, uh, and the challenge will be there. Uh, it's a tough school and you want it to be tough. Uh, and you are learning a lot, which is great. Um, and take some time. I mentioned it, but I, I really want to emphasize it again. Take some time for the application. Uh, it's not easy to get in. I know that, uh, and they're very tough on it on the application. So uh, take some time. You know, don't, don't rush it. Um, and, uh, and now they have an enrolling program where I think you can uh, join two two uh, two graduating year uh, uh, every year. So uh, so take your time. Maybe not the the the, the one that is coming up. But maybe the following one could be interesting for you. Um, and yeah, as a general comment, also be be ready to think that your career uh, could really change after going through the program. Um, I mean, again, as I mentioned to, to, to you guys earlier, that was the, that was the, 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 the fact for, for most of us in our writing year. So, uh, so that's, uh, I would say that could definitely happen to you if you're considering it. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So that's all the time we have for in this episode. I want to thank our featured guests, Alexander Pratik and Benjamin Carlotti for giving us such an insightful um, update about the Executive Master, which is a unique program that brings innovation, technology, and management together with an international perspective. I definitely want to thank our co-hosts, Barra Sapir and Eric Lucrecia, and of course, the guests in the audience and anyone who joined us on stage today. Uh, if you like today's episode, uh, please give us a thumbs up. We are always open to your comments and suggestions. And be sure to subscribe to MBA Waves to stay top of all trends and news in the world of MBAs, business, and education. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.